where did the name Rivery come from? It's named after my daughters. It's Riley and Avery. So Rivery is, but we pronounce that's, it Rivery, but that, internally it's Rivery. What's going on, fellas? Hey. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. How about you? Nice to see the shop finally, and uh, we're excited to show everybody. Um, in case you guys didn't know, they are right here in Sevierville, um, and that is where these things are made right here, and we're going to show you guys the process. Um, so let's head on inside. All I'll right. Try with you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. The product that we're talking about is the Rivery Manufacturing Zero, and we now have these at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So it is a manual out the front um, utility knife that is like a keychain friendly size, but an automatic return. Yeah. Which is a super satisfying fidget toy as well. Yeah. Um, but really easy to change the blade out all right so tell everybody who you are and how you got started where where did this all come from and and how did you get started down this road uh i'm michael sayers and uh i started machining as a hobby um i had a day job i was doing engineering and doing a lot of stuff and driving back and forth in knoxville all the time about 2015 i bought a car and i needed to make a supercharger pulley and it just spun out of control from there. I was like, well, let me just machine it myself and let me learn how to machine. Let me go into YouTube. And so about 2015, I started learning the tips and tricks and I started with a little bitty manual machine and I got really excited about CNC machining and then like that fire bur started burning in me. Like I want, I've got to get a mill, I've got to get a mill. And I had no money. So uh, I did a couple of projects and one thing led to another and I bought a little hobby mill and started learning fusion and how to do cam and tooling and um and then some i had people coming to me like hey can you make this can you make that and the one thing led to another and i ended up with sort of a job shop with i had one mill this one i you know took a risk and bought it a couple years after that i ended up losing my job and um I think by that time i was making enough money or there was enough opportunity that i decided to go full-time as a job shop and around then I hired Ryan and Ryan can tell you like when he started, we were just like, it was a, it was a literal sweatshop. We had no AC. We were just like one paycheck to the next. There was like days I'd be like, Ryan, I don't know if I can pay you this week. <laughs> and then I remember we- That's dedication right there. We, we, had, is, we had some highs and some lows, but when, when, when Rivery MFG started, it was Rivery CNC before. Right. And when Rivery MFG started, I sat down with Ryan one day and I said, dude, we're running out of money and we're just not making it. I said, I got this idea for this night. And I said, I'm gonna take 20,000 out of my 401k. I'm gonna fund us with that money through the end of the year. I'm gonna pay you to be here with me. And I'm gonna take 30 days and I'm gonna design it. We're gonna launch it on Kickstarter. We designed it, um, got a prototype made and we posted the prototype on TikTok. And it like, within 24 hours, we had millions of views and we were, we were planning like, yeah, in a few months, we're gonna launch it after we do some groundwork. And we're like, whoa, we gotta run right now. This was October, 2023. And we launched the Kickstarter in December, 20, uh, 2023. From that point forward, it's just been a mad dash trying to keep up with production, trying to keep up and just, we just, we just been growing, 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 growing. And there's been a lot of times where I'm like, hey, Ryan, I'm not sure I can pay you. <laughs> I took the rest of my 401k last year and dumped all of it into my this business so i have no more retirement so i am all in so when people say hey there's dedication there's dedication he didn't even have to go to vegas he just took those chips and pushed them all in to all the middle in. of the table now give us kind of the last year uh i guess uh in an overview there and and what that's been like the last year so there was a mad dash in the beginning of 2024 to just fulfill the kickstarter orders because there was about 2,000 units 1600 knives were pre-ordered yeah so you got a 1600 knife pre-order so it was just ryan and me we would run the machines we had one fixture or two fixtures so ryan would like just cycle fixtures all day and i would be like assembling the knives we hired 
uh, help a guy to help us assemble, Quentin, who's now does all of our packaging, all of our assembly. We hired him to help us do some assembly, and that took some pressure off. And then I guess it was about mid year we started. You know, uh, we we could never keep knives in stock, so we said we 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 fulfilled the Kickstarter, and then it was like we put ten or twenty units on the website, and like within minutes they're just poof gone. So it was basically like everything that we could put together and actually have to make some money right there when we picked up Quentin, we finally did it, and it was like. Like you said, like that gambling finally paid off. Yeah. The world you know, I remember Ryan and I sitting like, oh, is this one good enough to ship? And we would like go back and we had like piles of knives that were like, oh, this is not good enough. But uh, at some point, I think right around that time, we were like, we've got to figure out a way to make these things faster. And that's when we came up with this 16 pallet system. This is one of the pallets right here. Yeah. Uh, basic. Basically. Um, so tell us, tell us how that works. So we take bar stock and it gets loaded onto the pallet and every cycle that this pallet runs, it runs every operation of every part. So when you're done, when, this, when the cycle is over, you end up with two complete knives for every pallet. So every hour and a half, this machine will produce six complete knives and that one will produce six complete knives. And they run at the same time, so you get 12 knives per hour. We, we bought a robot and a third mill to do more products, but this one can take over and add some more knives if we need to. So it's just about machining time and how many machines you got. So the next step is out of here. But you've got some pretty big machinery in here. These are the biggest machines that we can fit through that door. And it's, <laughs> I've got pictures I'll have to send to you where they're like literally the frame is on the concrete and we're having to like push down on stuff to slide it through the door. So now we've got a little bit of the story, the backstory about you guys. Kind of go through the process and, and maybe show us around a little bit on, on what you guys have going on here. Sure. So uh, we start with bar stock out here right there it literally we open the door and it goes into the bar stock goes into this auto saw over here so once you program it let it go it'll just sit there and cut bar stock i drop into that bucket it does what i used to do yeah yeah i forgot <laughs> i forgot that whole part of the story there's a lot too what ryan used to do you sitting there with a chop saw ching oh, yeah. ching oh, yeah. ching yeah so basically bar stock ends up over here no these are knives this is the carriage and, and this is the lid and the uh the base this is the, our uh, fixture assembly station. So Alex, who does all of our uh, fixturing, uh, he'll put the blanks in. You know, these just come in here and they just go in these little fixtures. And everything in this fixture is set up so that you don't have to guess. It all just goes to a positive. You've got stops, stop. yeah. You've got stops. Everything gets torqued or you got a little auto. And he'll drop these down and then he'll torque them. And then as this, uh, as this gets machined, you know, it'll look like this. Right. And then they just get flipped over and move to the next position. So every op happens on this fixture every cycle. Nice. There's multiple ops happening. So this was a this base is a three ops. So it starts with op one and then it goes to op two and then it goes to op three where it puts the lanyard hole in. Oh did it just like that. That was one of the more tricky things I had to come up with because in the beginning we didn't have a lanyard hole. During the Kickstarter we got asked for it. And I was like, where can I put a hole in this thing? and have it look decent, you know? So that's how that happens. And so basically these are all numbered. Um, they're all identical. And so like I said, we've got 16 of them. So he'll build up uh, all all of them. And then um, they just get put in the machines. So while he's, while Alex is uh, letting the machines run, he'll normally come over and he'll, he'll clean the parts. Cause we t every part comes out of the fixtures goes into uh, buckets. So we're trying to degrease them and keep them clean throughout the whole process because right. ultimately that rolls into the best anodizing that we can get. Yeah, exactly. Trying to get the cleanest parts out the door as possible. So these get just um, cleaned in hot water. They just get placed in here in hot water um, while we wait for them to come. Basically the whole, the entire day's production will end up in here and then they'll go, Alex will take them and put them into our tumbler. They'll get tumbled. That deburs them and gives them a nice matte finish. Then they get washed and dried and then they get taken. So Alex's job ends at the, uh, the inside of here, which we didn't always, this used to be a living room. <laughs> so I see these, the clean knives get placed here. These are ready to be packed out and shipped to anodizing. In all reality, they really cost about the same amount as eggs now. So yeah. um, that's, yeah. uh, that's fantastic. So these get packed into these and then um, we do what we call pack outs. So these, we develop some packaging for our anodizers. So 
we can get exactly 288 knives in here and it's fully wow. packed out. So these are little trays we designed and made. So we don't have to worry about packaging. So these go to the anodizer like this and then the anodizer puts them back in here and they come back to us like this. Quentin is our assembly technician and our packaging guy. So he does all of the assembly. When they come back, they get fully inspected from the anodizer and then they get assembled and then packed in the boxes and ready and put in inventory. This is our next shipment coming to Smoky Mountain Knife Works. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. It is, it is, you're actually getting a preview. Is it really? Yeah. Ah, these yeah. are really coming to Smoky Mountain Knife Works. <laughs> this is really cool looking too. It's titanium, yeah. That is awesome. These cat labs are beautiful. We got blue, we got teal, we got purple. That is so cool and so smooth too. Yeah, the CAD Lab knives are really nice. He does a fantastic job in the anodizing. Um, the titanium, that is gorgeous. So this is this is something that you can add to any one of the yep. rivery knives. Yep, you can swap it on yours right now. Like an add-on. That is really cool. Yeah. Now, how much do those add-ons cost, like, in Not general? These are 95? Okay. For those of us that like to do, like, DIY projects and stuff, mm -hmm. there's so much that the individual can do from that point to customize yeah. it. Yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, laser engraving or um, some sort of uh, anodizing on the titanium itself or even doing like a flame treatment on it. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many cool things. Now, uh, as far as materials goes, you guys use uh, a few different materials. You've got the titanium here, but primarily you use aluminum, mm -hmm. but you also use brass as well, right? We have brass. Yep, that's a titanium brass. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. <laughs> the titanium and the brass together is nice. Oh, and that's yeah. smooth. Yeah. <laughs> that is that, smooth. That's groundbreaking, isn't it? <laughs> and it's it's heavy. I, I would yeah. I would say uh, for our media director uh, Isaac, uh, this would be yeet approved. Um, he, oh, he, he yeet approves certain things, uh, if it's heavy enough. And that is definitely yeet approved for sure. Now, as far <laughs> as the, uh, production process, and this is what I think is, is something that really hits home and really cool about you guys. How much of this process is done right here in the U S everything. I mean, you, you just saw it. It's, yeah. it's machine. We bring bar stock in, we machine it. We, uh, a lot of it's done in Tennessee, but, uh, all the little pieces and parts except for the magnets. You can't get the magnets in the US, but um, the springs, pins, we just got a response back from US Blade and we're gonna start putting all US Blade blades in our knives. So that's- That a, is cool right they there. They make beautiful blades and uh, that's gonna be our standard blade. That is really, really cool. We consider it a point of pride and a bit of a flex to source and make right here in the States. It's almost like it's hard, but yeah. we've done a lot, so much of it. It's like, but you, once you achieve it, you, you really can flex it. Yeah. Um, we well, were, and I think in, in today's, uh, I guess, economy and, and climate, um, it's something that's very important to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and obviously you guys providing jobs for people here. And, uh, I mean, it's a really feel good story. Mm -hmm. Um, seeing what you guys started with and what you guys have turned into here. Well, we appreciate you guys. And uh, I will say, you know, when you guys came into the shop, as soon as I got this in hand, and um, I mean, and everybody out there knows, I, I handle probably at the very least a dozen knives a day, a dozen different knives a day. Mm -hmm. um, and that's on the low end. Uh, so add that up through the year. I mean, you know, we're talking thousands and thousands of knives a year. And at this point, it's very difficult to find something groundbreaking, something that I look at and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Let me see that again. You guys have also done some collaborations like with uh, Pete's Pirate Life. Pete's Pirate Life. Um, the guys with Big Idea Design. When we uh, delivered, the, we, we personally delivered the PPL knives in Chattanooga to Big Idea Design. I, it's worth mentioning that they treated us like royalty. We got in there, they showed us their entire setup. They uh, took us over to their manufacturing area that they're on. They're on shoring parts now, too. Yeah. And uh, Chad and his team, they were so they even gave us lunch. We walked in and they they have nice. incredible. They're awesome nice. guys. I mean, I, I'm just blown away at the knife industry because I'm new to the knife industry. Right. Um, I'm just blown away at how great everybody is. I mean, it just I know there's there's always competition, but 
those guys, they were one example. And I was riding down with Ryan. We, we drove together and, and I was telling him, I was like, I'm not sure what to expect, but we got there we, on the ride back. We were like, I can't, I, I can't believe how nice they were. Overall, it's a, it's a very inviting and welcoming community, especially with what you guys are doing here. I mean, it's a heartwarming story and, um, this is what everybody wants to see. Is there anything you can hint at or tell us or show us? Oh, tease it with this. We, we got a new knife that we're working on and um, it's built like the Zero, but it's bigger and it's better. It's gonna have some new options and it's gonna have some some better usability. Uh, so we took everything we learned on the Zero, piled it into the new design, and I think people are really gonna like it. But this is, this is you can you get a little bit of an idea of what some of the internals look like. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a teaser for what's coming out. That and it's, we're really going to launch cool. it on Kickstarter. That is awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for being so welcoming for us yeah, and uh, and for allowing us to buy your stuff. Uh, we really appreciate that and, and uh, allowing us to put it out there on social media and uh, welcoming us to your shop here. This has been a really cool experience. Uh, like I said before, I geek out just getting to see how shops run. And, you know, we always see the end product, but I'm always more interested. I guess I grew up in that era where that TV show, How It's Made, yeah. was a big deal. And I still watch it to this day. I mean, getting to do stuff like this is like witnessing my own How It's Made yeah. TV show right here. So we really appreciate you guys. Thank you know, y'all. We really Thank appreciate you. you guys. Now, folks. You can pick up your CAD Lab collaborations at SMKW. They are going to be in any day now. Actually, they're probably already in by the time this video gets out because I think I'm going to have to edit this one. <laughs> I think that's going to be the way it goes. Um, but be sure to check on our website. If we are out of them, let us know or go over. Where can they find your all's website? It's uh, riverymfg.com riverymfg.com and if there's a combination or some sort of collaboration that you guys want um we're actually talking about doing some exclusive stuff as well and uh maybe some uh exclusive designs so stay tuned for that and if you've got any ideas about that put them in the comments down below you can find them at smkw.com remember if it cuts like a rivery then we carry it Did it come and say, oh!